Hey guys, first of all, I want to say welcome to the vlog, and uh, thanks for thanks for watching. Uh, second off, I guess I'll do kind of a recap of uh, what happened. Uh, basically, I was night driving and went around a turn. Deer jumped out, and I lost it. We ended up... Uh, the car was ended up totaled. Um, it really shouldn't have been totaled with the damage that was there. Uh, they wanted to charge $4,000 for a spot on the car that should have been repaired for around $2,000. And that's what totaled it. If, uh, they hadn't have, if they hadn't have estimated that improperly, it wouldn't be totaled. I would still be in it, and I wouldn't have the car that I have today which it upsets me that I'm still not in my last car. I'm not happy that I'm not in my last car, but I love this car and I'm happy that I'm in this car. I, I can't really explain it other than I miss that car a lot. And yeah, I, I really can't explain it. I'm happy in both vehicles. It's two different kinds of happy, really. Uh, but but I miss my uh, my 2012 a lot. Um, yeah, <laughs> I I guess that would be the short of it. Um, Well, without further ado, I present to you the Bitchin' Banshee. So just a few things that I've written down spec-wise. Uh, the engine is a 335 horsepower GLX V6. Yes, I got another V6. Uh, the foot-pound of torque uh, gets up to uh, 284 at 5,600 RPM. Uh, it's 20-inch rims on it because it's the RS edition. Uh, and it gets from 0 to 60 in 5.1 seconds. It's a 8-speed transmission and uh, it has the uh, quad NPP exhaust which with that it gets the uh, it has the flaps inside of the exhaust and you can decide if you want quad outlet or dual outlet depending on how loud you want the exhaust to sound. And I really enjoy that about the car, uh, especially because it also helps with fuel economy, and that's <laughs> that's really helpful because that's that's one of the main pros for me about the car uh, between my last one and this one. Uh, I've gone from around 14 miles to the gallon up to 25. 30-ish. <clears throat> and also what helps with that is whenever you get to cruising speed, it shuts off two cylinders and basically turns the car into a four-cylinder. 
Uh, also, uh, since this is the 50th anniversary edition, it comes with uh, red inserts in the doors and the uh, console. I'll show those a little bit later whenever I actually <laughs> clean out the inside. I need to do that. Uh, I, uh, another thing that I love about this car is the exterior paint. Uh, it's the Olympic white and even when it's not clean and it's in the sun, it's blindingly reflective. Uh, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous paint decision on Chevy's part. Uh, and one thing that I didn't like uh, Chevy decision wise was the last years of the fifth generation tail lights. But with the sixth generation tail lights, they've completely redeemed themselves. Yeah, they're all one piece, which eh, I liked the two piece decision more on the uh, earlier uh, fifth gens. But with the way the sixth gen tail lights are, they look like they're almost a two piece with the way they're split up. Uh, they look meaner, they, they're sharper. And with the LEDs, it's much nicer looking. Uh, also, on this uh, generation, uh, from the 5th to the 6th gen, they cut off about 400 pounds. The car is all around smaller, uh, lighter weight, quicker. Uh, the one difference between the 5th and 6th gen, uh, the infotainment center that comes in them is much better with this model, I believe. Uh, I don't know about the base model, I just know about this one. I haven't looked inside of a base model Camaro. But this one comes with basically what I describe as an iPad in the center console because it's just so large. Uh, it's got the uh, this is the, I believe, the 1LT, so it doesn't have heated seats, and uh, I enjoy having the cloth interior more than leather interior, just because everyone else says that leather interior is easier to keep, but I don't personally believe that. My family has had uh, leather interiors and things like that, and they've just been hard to keep looking nice. They always get stains and watermarks and stuff like that so I'm really really glad that this one has the cloth interior as well uh, in this uh, in this vehicle uh, it has the Bose sound system which I really wish I could demonstrate but eh, copyright fun uh, it has wonderful highs and lows stock which compared to my last car it's leaps and bounds better in the sound system uh, another thing that I like about this car as opposed to the last one the rev limiter on this car is higher uh, that's completely pointless to anybody who buys the car and doesn't like that, that isn't interested in vehicles but for the rev limiter being set higher, you just get better sound whenever you're revving the engine at a stoplight or whenever you're in park. It just sounds better. My cons for the vehicle, the list is shorter than the pros, but the first one is it's a push to start. I personally just feel that the push to start is pretty lame. Uh, it feels better whenever you have a start key and it, it's just more authentic. I don't enjoy the push button as much as I do a key. This car also has significantly greater blind spots. The rear view mirror does make up for it a lot, but if you're trying to check the older style way where you're looking behind you, the basically the second window or the little port style window is a good probably two, three, maybe four inches smaller. And that's definitely a drawback. Uh, another drawback is from the fifth gen to the sixth gen, 
the trunk is substantially smaller. Uh, also, they've decided to put the battery in the right rear fender, which I still can't figure out how you get the battery out to change out the battery. So that's going to be interesting whenever this battery does finally go out. Um, that, that'll be different. Uh, <laughs> another drawback is it doesn't have a spare tire, which I enjoyed having the thought of, oh, if you get a flat tire, you'll have, or if you have a blowout, you've got something to keep up. You, you've got something to at least get you somewhere. And that's one thing that I liked about my last one. It was a full-size spare. It was the same rim and tire that was on my last one. Or, that, not on my last one. It was the same rim and tire that is already on the vehicle. So, if I had a blowout, it'd be the same as driving with the blown out tire, but normal. Uh, and also with the fifth gen, they really cut down on any kind of storage space. Uh, the glove compartment, well the center console is cut down substantially to where, I mean you have almost no center console. Uh, the glove compartment is shorter on both sides of uh, the center console to where it's missing about four to five inches of space. Uh, but really the pros do greatly outweigh the cons. Uh, so yeah. There's my uh, pros and cons on the vehicle, and uh, whenever I get back home, we'll do a short exhaust video because it has three different settings with the exhaust. You have your silent, Turing, and sport. And there, is, there isn't a whole lot noticeable difference between the Turing and sport until you really are able to get on the exhaust or get on the throttle, and I mean, even then, the difference is minor. So, uh, I'll probably do a little uh, audio. You won't be able to see it because I'm not going to hook my GoPro onto the outside of the car. But I will put the uh, camera facing backwards in the rear glass. And uh, that will get a better sound for it. So, enjoy that next. Oh, oh, and another thing I forgot to mention, the back seat, just like in the last one, is a complete afterthought. There is exactly no space, just like that. <laughs> First off, I'm going to do stealth mode. sport mode, so engine sport mode and exhaust sport mode. There is a Turing and a sport engine mode as well. 